All right, everybody, we're going to talk about motor contactors and motor overloads because it seems to be a point of a little bit of confusion. Now, you might never have dealt with these, depending upon your area of electrical. They're very much confined to any place that we've got motors. Obviously, you know, it's a motor contact with a motor overload. And the device itself is not the most easy to navigate until you know what the different components themselves are. What we're looking at over here is just a drawing of a set of Schneider devices. We've got a contactor and an overload that are going to be joined together. The overload block is going to be this section down below over here. And then the contactor block is going to be this section over here that's going to be up top. And these overloads come with three individual fingers that stick out of the top. And what you do is you just mate that overload block up against the contactor and when you tighten down these three screws that pinches those three fingers that are coming off the top. Really straightforward, easy to put together components. What we need to understand though is all of the inside guts. So over here what we have is the same contactor but now what has happened is it has been drawn, uh, drawn and taken apart into two separate circuits that we are going to go and have inside or actually I should say circuit components. Over on the right hand side we have got all of the power components. That's going to be all of that highlighted underneath the yellow. And then over here on the left hand side, highlighted under the green, we're going to go and have all of the control components that are going to be part of this. Let's just examine each of these one at a time and then we'll put them together into, you know, one overall component. Over here on the right hand side, the red circuit up top inside of here is going to be all of my motor contacts themselves. The motor contacts are going to be a normally open component that is going to go and close when we want this thing to activate, to send power through to the motor itself. The purple set that you see at the bottom is drawn as resistors. Now the proper symbol for what's inside of there is this thing that we've highlighted over here with this double little shepherd's hook. That is our symbol for an overload. But the problem with that symbol is that it gets misinterpreted. And somehow there has been this assumption that a lot of electricians have where they think that this thing is going to go and open up in between those two and they think that the actual overload will separate the circuit. What you need to understand from all overloads is that they are a continuous path for current flow going through from the top of the finger out to the bottom like that. And what we have in line with that is we have some sort of a current sensing element. Now I've drawn resistors because the classic old school overloads were all resistive components that would heat up when we would send motor current through them. And if they got too hot, that heat would cause another set of contacts over on the control side, these ones over here, to go and change state. For now, when it comes to looking at overloads, what you need to do is you need to keep it in your mind at all times that that path going through from the top of the finger all the way through to that bottom terminal, that T1, is going to be a complete path. Let's talk about the power circuit right now under energization. Under energization on the contactor, what will happen is all of my normally open paths will close like that, which means that we would be able to go and send power through from the top straight through to the bottom and we would be able to monitor that power on all three lines because we would be able to take that heat that we have coming off those overload blocks. There are electronic overloads out there as well. Uh, these are very common at this point and uh, you expect to see more of them these days, but for now we'll just keep those resistors in the back. Let's take a look over on the right hand side. On the right hand side, we see that we have got some purple components. We're gonna take a look at those ones first down at the bottom. Those are two sets of contacts that are heat sensitive. Remember how on the power side, we're giving off heat every time that we send current through there. If it gets too hot, meaning that that motor has got too much current going to it, these contacts inside of here will change state. This normally open would close, this normally closed would go and open up. We will use those to control components of our motor circuits itself. Up top over here, this is going to go and be my contact and any auxiliary contacts that are part of it. Now, not every single contactor actually has the auxiliary contacts as part of it. Some of them, you have to go and snap those on separately. We'll take a quick look at that in a second. But others, like this one over here, uh, the LR9 series, are going to have them built in. There's going to be a set of normally open contacts. We see that going from 13 to 14. There's going to be a set of normally closed contacts. We see that going from 21 to 22. And then we've got the coil. And the coil is going to be a magnetic coil that when energized, in other words, when we apply power to it, 
Okay, we'll just pretend like that's got power applied to it. That is going to go and change state of all red contacts. So these would be closed when that gets energized, as well as on this side, this normally open would close and this normally closed would open. Okay, all the red contacts change state upon an energization of that coil. Right now, with that coil lit, that's what we would see inside of this contact as far as all those red contacts go. <coughs> Excuse me. As soon as we would de-energize the coil, this is the state that they would all go back to. All right, that is our simple you know, explanation of the components. Let's just take a look now at utilizing the power circuit, and then we'll take a look at utilizing that uh, other circuit we have for controls as well. This is a simplified three-phase diagram that we have over here. On the left-hand side, we see that we have got the breaker. Over here, we're feeding in three power, uh, lines of power. This is North American Canadian standard here. So we've got red, black, and blue as being my lines one, two, and three. And then we are feeding that power through out to a motor over here. We just got a three phase motor in a Y type of connection. You should be able to go and follow that path all the way through. If you take a look at the contacts, we know that if we would energize this, this would be closed, this would be closed, and this would be closed, which would allow current to then follow all the way through out to here. That yellow line, we're highlighting that one from our line one. We could go and highlight line three, which would send its power through there. And I guess we might as well go ahead and highlight line number two there as well. And line number two would also send power through. So we would be able to send all of that power through to the motor by closing those contacts. What you'll note that's really important over here is this. All of that motor current is going through those overload heaters. And when it goes to those overload heaters, it's going to give off a small amount of heat. If the overload heaters are sized and set correctly, and you have to do that based on the motor opacity, then the amount of heat that's coming off of them won't be too much. The motor will be safe. It'll be giving off heat, but it's a fine amount of heat. If, however, we start to go and increase the amps on our motor, we load this thing down, we drop our speed, and all of a sudden, you know, we start getting that uh, rise in current, what would happen is these are going to go and have more heat given off. Remember that the watts are off of an I squared R. So we're looking at a squared value. Small increase in current is actually a squared value, which means that it rises along that universal exponential curve like that. So we get a little bit of an additional amount of amps going through it. It's going to be enough that that heat is going to go and trip that other circuit, the overload circuit, which we haven't examined yet, but then that will be able to take out our motor. We also see that these contacts over here control all the power out to the motor. As soon as we would take out these contacts over here, we would take out all lines to the motor as well, shutting that motor back off. Okay, that's power. Let's take a quick look at controls. We'll start with the 230 volt uh, control circuit over here, what we have down on the bottom, and I'm not gonna go through and explain all of these because this is basic elementary electrical theory, but that is gonna be our ladder diagram for a standard three wire stop start station. What I have done on it is I have color coded in every line. You should be able to follow that dark red line on that diagram into the stop push button. Out of the stop push button, we got a dark blue line that is going to a auxiliary contact. Note how that's red because that's one of my contactors, uh, auxiliary contacts over there, as well as we are going to the normally open push button. That's going to be this one here, the start normally open push button. And then from the opposite side of the start push button, we are then heading to the coil, so we head to the coil, as well as we have got a head down to our auxiliary contact to the opposite side. We follow those lines through with the light blue. Then we go to the coil, and then from the coil, we are then going to go and run out of the A2 of the coil, the other side, down and into this normally closed purple overload contact that we have over there. And then from there, we're going back out to our 230 volt line. This is with a 230 volt, you know, contactor and a line and control circuit that we have. And I know we haven't drawn in any of the circuit protection for that. That's fine. We're not dealing with that in this video. We're just looking at the operation. What you should see out of this is that any time that this motor were to draw too much current and give too much heat off of these, it is going to go and affect this set of contacts over here. And if that set of contacts were to go and get shot wide open by the heat coming off the inside of that contactor, what it would do is it would go and disconnect us from line two. That's what's gonna go and shut this thing down. That's the safety aspect of the actual contactor. 
This is for a 230 volt one. I do want to specifically show you 120 as well here in Canada. We are required that we have to be safe with grounded circuits. Now 120 volts means that we've got a neutral and neutral means that it's gonna be grounded down. If we ground down a neutral, we cannot go and stick our overloads on the downstream side of our coil. Note that from this one, we're going straight back to that neutral over there. What we have to do, if we have got a grounded control circuit, is we must go and move that overload up to the front. It's basically the exact same circuit as this one over here, but what we've seen happen now for the 120 is we're gonna move that over to the front, which gives us this circuit over here. You can follow your lines through Again, you should be able to go and see, you know, the dark uh, red lines over there into that purple overload. Here's that purple overload out on the orange up to my stop push button. Here's my stop push button out of the stop push button on the dark blue to a auxiliary contact and the start push button. That's those ones. And then out of the start push button along the light blue to the coil, as well as over to the auxiliary contact over to the auxiliary contact over there. And then from the opposite side of the coil, we see that we've got an actual identified conductor over there, a white conductor that's gonna go back to the neutral in whatever my source is. This is here uh, simply just because otherwise we could end up with bypassing of our overloads. And I'll quickly, quickly draw that in over here. Let me just erase that one from up top over there. And let me go and put the overloads down here at the back end. If this is where my overloads themselves work, this neutral we know is connected down to ground. It's connected to a ground conductor, to a ground plate or rod or whatever uh, type of electrode we have, and it's also bonded down to the rest of our circuit. Uh, that's what happens with all neutrals. We have to do it. The danger that we run into with our overloads being placed over here is if there were to be an accidental ground on this conductor that goes between the overload and the contactor itself, if that were to accidentally ground, and we'll just draw that in over here, that would give us a complete path that would, in essence, be able to go around and bypass that. So following through, if I were to follow current, I would be able to take current up, around, through that grounded path, and back to neutral. Effectively, this completely bypasses the overload contact. We're not allowed to go and do that here in Canada. That's why we have to, just erase that over there, move that up to the very front end of our motor control circuit over here. All right, data sheets for these uh, are going to go and come on the inside of the boxes. They're kind of a funny looking data sheet when we look at them because we see that, well, it's just a folded out box over here. Relatively straightforward, what I do wanna point out, this is the one for my overload. I'll just go up top over here. It's for the LRD, LR3D. One, which is the one that I've got drawn over here. This shows us what it looks like. Those are those three fingers that I was referring to on the top that are gonna be used to put onto the contactor. And you can see that over here that they're showing. We just attach this thing, shove it up into those bottom ones over there. And then we tighten that down with a screwdriver. One, shove it up, two, tighten that thing down. We can also take those overload contacts. We can put them on standalone bases. This is not a contactor. This is just a double screw base where if I've got a contactor somewhere upstream or downstream, I could just mount these things standalone as well. Okay, this over here at the very bottom shows us the states of our contacts, the 97, 98, and the 95, 96. It shows that anytime we hit the stop, that little red push button that we have on our contactor, so this one right over there, Anytime that we would go and hit that one, it is going to go and open the 9596. Same with anytime that we get an overload, it would go and open that 9596. And then it shows that when we press the reset, 9798 would then reopen, 9596 would then go and reclose. In other words, that's going to go and reset my contactor off of that blue push button that we have over there. That's going to be our Overload, it's only shown down here at the bottom, the states. There's not a lot of documentation as to what all the different states of the contacts are. That's the best explanation you're gonna have off of that. The rest of this is just gonna be torque ratings and things like that. The contactor, similar looking thing. Uh, torque ratings, it gives us a little bit of, uh, you know, these are auxiliary things that we can go and add onto. These ones here, auxiliary contacts, we can snap onto the front, you know, add in lots of auxiliary contacts. We can even stick in a couple of timers, uh, little pneumatic timers that are going to go and slow down how quickly 
or how slowly that coil pulls in. We've got some other auxiliary contacts over here on the side. Down here at the bottom, this shows us our actual connections that we are going to go and have. Showing that their coil with that dotted line controls all of these. Line one switches over to T1, line two switches over to T2, line three switches over to T3, and then 13, 14 is normally open, and 21, 22 is gonna be normally closed. That is just referring to everything up top here on that contactor itself. <clears throat> Zooming out here a little bit, we'll roll up top. Um, there are some of them, they show some here with semiconductor components. These are just talking about protections that are available for some of these, as well as some univoltage coils. This is showing how you can go and attach uh, you know, components on there. They're showing just diagrams of the little spring load components that you have over here. That's for that timer one. These are just gonna be your torque ratings based upon the gauge of uh, component that you're gonna be utilizing. And then down here on the bottom, it just gives you a bunch of different amperage ratings that you are going to go and have uh, for three phase versus for you know lighting or other types of resistive loads. All right, that's it for your contactors and overloads. Hopefully that you know clarifies anything. Once again, you got to just you know mentally in your own mind break them apart into these two sort of you know circuits. We are going to go and have our main power. Let me just erase that main power circuits, which are just feeding through those resistors or through those heaters in the bottom. And then we are going to go and have our control power components, which are going to be these ones.